Hey guys, Ms. Peterson here. And today I'm going to be going through a lecture on electric potential. So electric potential and electric potential energy can get very confusing in electrostatics. So I'm going to try to explain it as simply as I can for you. Okay, so we're going to talk about voltage. We're going to talk about ISO lines. Sections in your textbook you can find right there. This are the essential knowledge from the AP curriculum and, of course, the other things that we've done along this. So first off, let's talk about gravity, okay? Gravity is a little bit of an easier place to start because we experience gravity in our everyday lives um, and we're pretty familiar with it. So right now, I want you to picture Earth. And along the surface of Earth, it has a pretty equal gravitational field, okay? And where does that gravitational field point? Well, it points down toward the center of Earth. Any mass in that field would feel a gravitational force toward Earth. So we can picture a ball in this field. Okay, there's my ball. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lift that ball up to some new point, okay? So, what happened there? Well, by lifting the ball up, say I'm lifting it up over my head, okay? I am increasing its height, okay? Which increases its gravitational potential energy. I'm just gonna abbreviate that. Gravitational potential energy increases, okay? Remembering the potential energy of gravity is going to be mass times the gravity times the height. So it depends on the mass of the object, not just the electric, not just the gravitational field that it's in. Okay, and well, how did it get that energy? How did it get that energy to go up? Well, you did work on that object. Okay. So now, let's see if we can create an analogous situation in moving a proton against an electric field, okay? Now, to get a constant electric field, what you're gonna see most often is two charged plates. We'll talk about these a lot when we talk about capacitors, which are two charged plates. And if I want the electric field, to be pointing downwards, just like our gravity one. I have to have the negative plate here on the bottom and the positive plate up top, okay? Meaning that if I have a positively charged object here, it's gonna be attracted to the bottom, just like masses are attracted toward the Earth. And then I'm going to move it up to some other point here. Okay, now, just like for gravity, we just talk about the height. For this one, it doesn't necessarily make sense to talk about the height, so I'm just gonna talk about its position within the field. Okay, so its position in the field changed. Okay, now, in order to do that, <clears throat> it must increase its potential energy just like gravity, but this time it's electrical potential energy increased, okay? And we're gonna talk a little bit about what the equation for that looks like, AKA, in order to move that proton away from the negative plate toward the positive plate, okay? It's not gonna like that. The positive plates are gonna repel it. So you have to have done work on that positively charged object or that proton. Okay, now, what else I wanna talk about are these lines right here. So I'm gonna draw horizontal lines perpendicular to our field lines. Now these are called iso lines. In terms of gravity, okay, these are just lines of equal height, okay? Now, new concept. In terms of electrostatics, those are lines of equal 
potential. Equal electrical potential. Okay? And we measure those in units of volts. Okay? That's our voltage. So keep all of that in mind as we go through the rest of this. Um, little review because it comes in an electrostatics. Okay? Work is force times distance, okay? And work also equals a change in energy. In regular physics, you might have calculated work as a change in gravitational potential energy. Because in order to do work against the gravitational field, that's lifting up. Away from Earth. Okay, Earth being the mass that's causing the gravitational field. Where work in an electric field can be different. It depends. Okay, here we had to do work on the proton by moving it up against that electric field. But if this were, say, an electron, okay, I'm just going to use yellow for the electron instead, the electron wants to go up. Okay, that's the path that it would naturally take, being attracted to that positively charged plate. So actually, in terms of an electron, we would have to move it uh, with the field lines in order to do work on it, okay? So for positive charges, work is done moving <coughs> against the field lines, i.e. moving the proton up in what we just drew, where for negative charges, work is done moving with the field lines. Basically, in gravity, in gravity, everything falls down. Everything falls toward Earth. Where in electrostatics, positive charges fall down with the field lines, but negative charges fall Okay, they naturally want to go up against the electric field, okay? So we have to keep in mind that when we do work against an electric field, it depends on the charge. Okay, so let's get a little deeper into some of these concepts. Again, we're looking at the same situation, just from a slightly different thing. This is a schematic of a capacitor, which is basically just two charged plates, which create a constant electric field between them. Now, the reason that this is considered a constant electric field, um, first, it's a constant electric field between the plates, but near the edges of the plates, okay, we will get some of those rounded field lines. Those are called edge effects, and it's important to keep note of those, okay? But let's talk about a proton within this field. So if I have a proton there, it's going to feel an attraction to that negative plate and a repulsion from that positive plate. That attraction is going to be a little bit stronger than the repulsion. Where if I put that positively charged proton there, it's going to feel a repulsion from that positively charged plate and an attraction toward that negatively charged plate. Meaning that no matter where this proton is at, because of those two things creating the force, the net force on it is always going to be the same. That's what makes it a constant electric field, okay? No matter where in the field it is, it's going to feel a force to the left, okay, along the electric field lines. As it moves with the field from there to that position, okay, well, its kinetic energy is going to increase because that force, that force is going to speed it up. It's going to increase its kinetic energy. But its potential energy will decrease, okay? Potential energy decreases as it moves within that constant electric field. So these dotted lines are lines of equal potential, okay? So, Electrical potential energy is a scalar measurement in joules, units of joules, okay? 
We use, um, on your equation sheet, it's represented as a U sub E. And the change in electrical potential energy is equal to Q, the charge, times the change in voltage. Okay, so Q is the charge, and delta V is the potential difference. Potential difference in units of volts. Okay, just like in gravity, it's the um, mass times gravity times height. You can kind of think of that potential difference as that gravity times height component. So if we had this electric field, we might say, okay, well, this potential is 10 volts, this is 5, this is uh, 0, this is negative 5, negative 10. It doesn't really matter where we set it because it's the change from this potential to this potential that matters. It's that change that matters, not necessarily where we set as 0. Okay, just like for a pen, if I have a pen and I'm doing a conservation of energy problem, okay, and I just have the table set as my height zero, cool, I can set that as my height zero and my zero potential energy. But then it could also fall off the table. And there's that difference as well. Okay, so remember that when we talk about potential difference. A potential difference is a change in electrical potential energy. Okay, basically it's the change in electrical potential energy per unit charge. So it's units are joules per coulomb. That's what a volt is. A volt is how many joules of energy it would take to move a one coulomb charge. Okay, so the convention for this is that we put positive potentials around positive charges and negative potentials around negative charges. The zero electrical potential is just an arbitrary point, okay? Typically, we set it infinitely far away from the charge, the place out that it is far enough away from the charge that it will not feel any force due to that charge. For circuits, we set the zero as the ground, okay? And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, another, the way that we talk about electrical potential mathematically is that that potential, that voltage around a spherical charge can be calculated by kq over r, okay? So this is to find the potential around, the potential around point charges or possibly spheres of charge, okay, where r is the distance from charge charge of the source charge sorry let me be more specific there and q is that source charge okay okay now important thing to know is that Positive charges, like we said, positive charges go with the field lines, so they always go from high potential to low potential, okay? Just like in gravity, it goes from a high gravitational potential energy to a low gravitational potential energy. So positive charges move from areas of high potential, again, which is typically around positive charges, to low potential. Remembering that that is also the voltage. You can think of it as the voltage. Okay, so they flow from high to low. Where negative charges, okay, negative charges will always move from low potential or voltage to high potential. This is analogous to like if some object rolled up the hill, okay? Doesn't happen in gravity, doesn't make sense. But in electrostatics, it does, okay? Now, this brings us to electrical potential related to a difference. Um, so we can use this equation around a source charge. When we know the value of that source charge, we use that equation, okay? But if we look, say, 
at these two charged plates in the capacitor, well, we might not know the charges creating those plates. So we'll often use another equation that relates the voltage or potential difference to the electric field. That equation is that the electric field is the change in voltage divided by the distance between those two points. So say you have, okay, within your field, you have your field there, okay, and you have your volts there. The distance between those would be your R, and then you would find your delta V change in voltage, and that can give you the value of the electric field. You can use this between the plates of charge capacitor or when moving a charge in a field around some source charge when you don't know the source charge, okay? So you use this anytime you have two known potentials. When you're moving a charge through a field, okay? So that's what it is. We have electrical potential, electrical potential difference, which is what we define as voltage, electrical potential energy, okay? And of course, electric force and electric field. Um, I really recommend creating a mind map of all of these concepts, all of these terms and all of these equations to see how they all relate to each other because it can get kind of confusing. But let's look at some example problems. Go ahead and pause the video and try the examples on your own before I go over them. So, for number one, okay, greatest potential will be the part farthest away from whatever is creating the charge. So, if we picture a negative plate over here, or maybe it's some negative source charge way over there, okay, A is the farthest away from it. So, A has the greatest electrical potential energy. Okay, you can also think of it as they point, arrows always point from high potential to low potential. Okay, oh, I should write that down. Arrows of field lines point from high potential to low. So A, is going to be the highest one. Okay? The figure below shows isolines of constant electrical potential. Okay? This is like that topographical map thing. Which way would the electric field vector point at A? Okay, well, electric field vectors point away from positive charges and toward negative charge. So it would probably point away from that positive charge. Now, if we place an electron at point A in which, oh, I should label that, that is the electric field vector, okay? If we place an electron at point A, okay, well, electrons go against the field lines, so it's going to feel a force toward that positive charge, okay? It's going to be attracted toward that positive charge. Now, if we took that electron, and we moved it from point A, which is along the 100 volt line, to point B, which is along a different potential, it's on that 50 volt, li volt line, would it gain or lose energy? So we have to think about what the negative charge wants to do. Negative charges want to be attracted toward positive charges, and they want to flow from low potential to high potential. Okay, that's what they naturally do. Now, if we picture that electron along this 100 volt line and moving it to that 50 volt line, okay, well, we're moving it against what it wants to do. We have to move it away from that positive charge. So, we would have to do work on it, and that electron would gain energy. We could even calculate how much energy it would gain. We could use delta U sub E equals Q delta V. And when we do that, we would get that it gains 8 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. Okay? Because this is a negative charge, and the change in voltage would be 50 minus 100. That would be negative, giving us a positive change in potential energy. Boom. 
Okay, now number three is a challenging one. Okay, were you able to figure out how to start to set it up? Here's a hint. It is a conservation of energy problem. That's all it is. It's designed to look like a scary electrostatics problem, but it's not. It's just conservation of energy. So let's go ahead and draw our picture of what's going on here. Okay, we have a positron which is a positively charged version of an electron, meaning it has all the same charge and mass and all of that as an electron, but it's positively charged. And it's moving into a region. Oh, it has an initial velocity. Let me go ahead and write that down. It has an initial velocity of six times 10 to the sixth meters per second to the right, okay? It enters a uniform electric field directed to the left, okay? So let me go ahead and draw that field in. There is my electric field. As the positron enters the field, its electric potential is zero, okay? So we're saying that its initial electrical potential or voltage is zero. What will be the electrical potential at the point where it has a speed of one times 10 to the sixth meters per second? Okay, so at some point within the field, the field is going to exert a force that slows that proton down, okay? It's a force in the opposite direction of its velocity. And at some point in that field, its V final is going to be one times 10 to the sixth meters per second, okay? So some of its kinetic energy it initially didn't have any electrical potential energy. It wasn't in a field. It said that its initial voltage was zero, okay? It's transferred into electrical potential energy. So it's initial kinetic energy plus its initial electrical potential energy e oops, equals its final kinetic energy plus its final electrical potential, okay? Now, remember, U sub E is equal to Q delta V, okay? If there's no voltage in the beetle, this is zero. So initially, it only has kinetic energy. So, oh, um, its mass, because it's a positron, same mass as an electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms, and its charge is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, okay? So then we plug all that in. We have 1 half mv squared equals v initial squared equals 1 half mv final squared plus q delta v. That delta v is what we're looking for. It starts at zero, so it's whatever that is. You plug in all of the numbers, okay? Or let me go ahead and rearrange it. So your delta V is going to be one half M times V initial squared minus V final squared, okay? All divided by Q. I'm not gonna do the math for you. Plug it into your calculator and you should get a delta V of 100 volts. Okay, cool. So you should have learned The differences and similarities between electrical potential energy and electrical potential, okay, what voltages and what iso lines or equipotential lines are. Um, okay, cool. Okay, cool.